Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and a few days ago I did a video about Clara IO shutting down. Now, Clara is one of the very first 3D modelers based in the browser, and if you're looking for that browser-based modeling fixed, well, I've got you covered, because when something dies, something new replaces it, and that new thing is Womp. Now, Womp is currently in alpha. You can see it in front of you right now. And it is a pretty thing, actually. You can't really tell it's in the browser for the most part. Well, unless, of course, I do this. And then you see here it is running in Chrome. By the way, Chrome is the recommended browser. Everything else gets a very annoying message right here that you cannot get rid of. Um, otherwise, again, right-click menus. Uh, do what you expect them to do if they make sense to be there. So, for example, I come over here, right-click. You get the stuff going on over there. It feels like a desktop application once you run it full screen. As you see here, a diorama that was created using it. Everything in WAMP is using something called sign distance field. So the closest uh, software analog I can think of to WAMP is probably Magicka CSG, uh, which again uses sign distance fields to create your models. On top of that, you have, um, so you got your typical editing environment. You got widgets for moving things around in the scene. Uh, you have um, a, a very cool goopiness to your stuff. So everything has goop strength. So let me go ahead and explain exactly how that works. So I'm going to go here to the menu and we will do a new project. So here we are in new project land and uh, the default project kind of shows you some of the way things work. If you've ever done any CSG or Boolean based modeling, you're going to understand WAMP right away. So here you can see we've got a cube and over here, we got a sphere, and the sphere has goopiness. Now, this kind of, if you're an old school modeler, it's going to feel a lot like meta balls. So you see here, as this gets closer to the other object, they automatically blend together. So there you see, you can create organic shapes by controlling the goopiness between two objects. Now, this guy is actually made up of, uh, inside of this is a sphere. So there's an invisible sphere inside of it that is taking or subtracting thing. So there you see that shape is uh, set as a negative shape. So there is a negative sphere inside of the sphere, this guy right here. I could switch it to positive and you can see they're gonna group together. Or I could go back to negative and then the one will be carved out from the other. So when these two objects interact, you see the immediate effect. So again, this guy is a positive. So you hear it goes into the shape and they kind of blurb or blue, um, or kind of boolean together. Whereas negative is the subtractive thing. And then again, we've got group strength for handling like how viscous, I think, would be the word to use, the transition is between the two objects. On top of that, you've got a lot of nice things going on here. You've got lighting and environments. So you've got uh, HDRI maps, a variety of different ones for showing and rendering in your scene. Uh, once you actually have modeled something you'd like, you've got a variety of options for exporting it. So I can come up here. Oops, not, it's my export downloads. Um, so I go here to share. I can download the 3D model. And what you're going to see is you can bring objects out in OBJ, PLY, STL uh, for 3D. 3D printing uh, and 3DS, but it's not allowing me here. Maybe I have to switch over here. So you can get it out in a number of different formats. The majority of you are going to want to get out in OBJ format. Now, one thing you're going to find um, with the current alpha and the free tier or whatever, I don't know what the pricing structure is ultimately going to be, uh, but your creations are public. Now, it doesn't mean that other people can use them, but other people can see them. So if you're looking to use this to do a top secret game, obviously it is a not a good choice for you. But if you're looking to do some like casual modeling, this is a very kind of cool tool. So you're Basic primitives are how you start things out. So over here, you got a variety of different objects. So you've got um, sphere, cylinder, and cube. So again, just literally create something in the scene like that. And then I could go ahead and create another one like so. So another cube here, and we'll bring them together. And we can have them they'll automatically Boolean as they interact. Or I could go ahead again and make a negative, and we can automatically carve one thing out from the other. You can also control the roundness of your cube. So you can turn your cube into a... I don't know what a rounded cube is called, but I, I assume it has a name. Again, we also have the goopiness for how the things interact with each other, um, kind of the, the magnetic field around the blob uh, that you are dealing with. And then you've got controls here for a variety of different materials. So you, you've got a neat structure going on. You also even have uh, experimental support for uh, curves. Uh, so where is my curve? Okay, over here. So like this, this is an object made out of curves. Like so, so I grab point one in the curve and I could go ahead and drag that anywhere I wish. And we can just kind of keep adding so I can add another point to my curve like so. And I can go in the other direction with it. So you can go ahead and create some uh, very organic tube-like shapes here as well. And of course this object, this overarching object as well can also be made a negative. So when it interacts with other objects in the scene, uh, I think I'm on a different plane. 
uh, it should automatically subtract out. Now, do keep in mind, uh, curves are marked as experimental, so it's a little iffy how well they will work. On top of that, you also have... Um, let me make this guy back to a positive. Uh, you have a variety of materials as well, including community created materials. So I could apply this one to my and add it to my collection. So you can see the object material is in action. Uh, then over here, you can see uh, we've got the control over the backdrop, the lighting of the scene. Uh, and then we've even got uh, function support for uh, duplicate union and subtraction functions there as well. Uh, it is all in the cloud. Uh, you can record a video of you creating the process. Uh, we also have, yeah, get out of my way. Uh, if you come in here, let me just go ahead and uh, delete a bunch of this stuff. So we're back to really just having a sphere now. Uh, you also come, you may have noticed that while I was here in the primitive shapes, a variety of shared objects with you as well. Uh, so if you want to start from one of these things, you can do so, anything you want there. So let's bring in this low poly snowman. Uh, you can literally just click it over there and um, bring it into your scene as well. So there's a community-based aspect of it. Uh, all of these objects are available to you as well uh, to go ahead and use. Now, what you're going to find is you can actually go to uh, the WOMP website. So let me... Come on, let me get over there. Over here, uh, the homepage here, you're going to find there are a number of models that you can actually start from, check out other people's stuff. And you're gonna find some of these models are uh, remixable, so you can actually uh, start from someone else's work and check out uh, there. So I've actually done uh, a couple of projects there using other people's stuff. Uh, so if I go back to my home, I believe it's right here, you're going to notice from projects, uh, that diorama we started with, or this uh, edgelord version of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, these were uh, from community projects. So you can actually uh, start from the community, see how other people made uh, more complicated scenes out of it. Uh, so as you can see, you can create some uh, pretty intense objects. You can see the, the things that went together to create this guy here. But it's basically a combination of, uh, you know, bo Boolean objects. You're going to have these, uh, your, your primitives are pretty basic and straightforward. So you're really just working with spheres, cylinders, and cubes, and then experimental curves here. Uh, and then um, kind of blobbing them together, positive and negative, adding curves, taking away curves, and changing the goopiness. And this combination of things can be used to create just about any kind of object you can imagine. Uh, it's early on. It is, again, just uh, in alpha right now. Uh, you do need to use the Chrome browser, but it is free to sign up. I just used my Google account to sign into it. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and check that one out, it is womp3d.com. That's W-O-M-P-3-D.com. Very interesting project. It'd be interesting to see where this goes. And I know some of you just hate browser software in the first place all around. Uh, but for those that don't, uh, looking for a bit of a different modeling experience, uh, SDF stuff is actually quite neat. I did a video on SDF in general explaining exactly how it works. But it's basically kind of like uh, mathematically talking about the, the outline of objects as opposed to the vertices of them. So this allows you to uh, do things like blob them all together because you're basically defining uh, an outer hull around things as opposed to you know a strict mesh itself. And it's got some neat uh, capabilities as a result. So also, if you're interested but you're wanting standalone software, uh, check out Magicka CSG. Uh, that's from the maker of Magicka Voxel. It's similar software as well. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, that is Womp. Uh, a very interesting project for sure. It's a different way of modeling. Some of you are going to love it. Some of you are going to hate it. And I'd be interested to know which one you are. Let me know. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.